All right, let's see how we run the binary bomb lab on a Windows system in Windabot. So inside of the source code that you checked out for this class, there is a folder binary bomb lab. And inside of that is Windows folder with a bomb.exe and a bomb.pdb. Let's go ahead and copy those to our desktop. And then we're gonna open up Windabug. From within Windabug, we go to File, Open Executable. And on our desktop, we open the bomb.exe. Okay, so there's no output yet because it's broken at the standard system breakpoint at the beginning. So let's just go ahead and hit G for go to see what happens after I bump up the font size a little bit for you. All right, G to go. Go back to the executable user interface. It prints out, welcome to my fiendish little bomb. You have six phases with which to blow yourself up. Have a nice day. And then we've got a little blinking cursor here. So it's probably expecting some sort of input. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it some sort of input. And when I hit enter, boom, the binary blob has blown up. So the goal of this lab is to figure out what are the inputs that this binary executable is expecting in order to avoid these explosions. So what does one do when one is faced with a completely black box binary executable that is doing something that we have no idea how to influence its behavior? Well, we look at the assembly, of course. So let's go ahead and restart this and try again. We can, you know, just look at the assembly straight up, but hey, we've got a debugger. And so since we're not, you know, analyzing known malware, we should always use a debugger or use dynamic analysis whenever possible and, you know, use our supplemental static analysis, our reading the code as, you know, appropriate. So let's go ahead and restart the program. And it's going to be broken at the system breakpoint again. Now I gave you the PDB file for this. That's the debug symbol information. So you're not going to have that for most uh, real programs, but we've got it, so let's use it. So we load the symbols and let's examine, let's first set a breakpoint at main. And then using GDB syn syntax, breakpoint at main. And then let's unassemble the function main and just kind of like skim over it and see, you know, what do we see? What's going on with this thing? All right, so the very beginning of main, we see some stuff that looks sort of like stores to the shadow stack, or shadow store rather. Uh, we see push RBP, push RDI, and if we see a balance to that, then we might expect that it is a caller save, register save, and indeed we do see balance. We see the corresponding pops at the end, so perfectly balanced as all things should be. All right, what else do we see? We see a sub allocating some space on the stack, LEA, move, blah, blah, blah. We've got a rep stos and we've got CCs. So that seems to be that kind of buffer initialization stuff that we see in debug built code. Seems like when I compiled this, I didn't turn off all of that cruft. So you're gonna see some cruft here, which you should of course ignore. Got other stuff like this check for debugger, just my code. That has to do with the just my code debugging stuff that we normally turned off, but which I left on here. So cruft, cruft, you know, skip the cruft. And then, you know, we could keep reading. We could see, okay, setting EAX, ECX to zero, call to imp, funk. You know, I don't know what that is, whatever, just keep going. All right, some la la la, next call imp f open all right i might know what f open is that seems to be file system opening from normal you know file system access stuff uh we got some stuff that looks like indexes you got you know moves and imols you know index one index zero of something uh we got a call to printf we got a call to exit and you know quite frankly we can just keep reading this but again static analysis were appropriate but we've got a debugger so let's go ahead and use it so let's go ahead and continue on. Let's go and let the thing run. Now we're gonna hit the breakpoint on main that I set. So we're now in main. And let's just go ahead and you know step through main and see where it goes. Down here in the disassembly window, we've got set to at dollar sign scope IP. So it's gonna be just following along as we go. So let's put in P for step. 
and that'll be doing a step over of these various assembly instructions. So let's just, you know, step and, and see where it leads us. So I can just keep hitting enter. It'll just keep repeating the P command. Step over the cruft, buffer initialization, rep stos, just my code debugging, stepping, stepping, stepping. Don't know what they do. Cool. Oh, whoa, where did, what just happened? All right, I just jumped somewhere. And where I jumped to was a call to initialize bomb. All right, well, that's interesting. And I stepped over it and doesn't look like there was any output. So whatever. Now I see some printfs coming up. So a printf, a printf, and then something called read line. All right, well, we know it takes some sort of input. So that's probably where it's getting its input. Let's go ahead and step over these. First printf. All right, that's the first line. Step over the second printf, and that is the second line. So now this read line is probably where it's going to be expecting my input. So let's go ahead and step over that. And now you can see that all of a sudden the debugger becomes inaccessible. Uh, I can't put commands in the window. It says busy here. And that's because basically this is sitting here waiting for input continuously. So we need to provide some sort of input, and we do that. And then finally, it you know steps the step over read line finishes, and now we've exited the read line function. All right, so from this point, next up, I see some calls to phase one, phase diffused. I see a printf, and I see a read line. Okay, so let's just keep you know stepping, see what happens. So phase one and phase one diffused are right adjacent to each other. So I would expect that if I even get out of phase one. I should immediately go into phase diffused. Uh, skimming down again, printf read line, but then I can see phase two coming up here as well. So basically, what I expect is phase one is going to be expecting some input, and if I successfully get out of it, phase is diffused, and then it moves on to phase two. So that means I need to figure out what phase one is expecting. That probably is where the, the checks of input are happening. So let's step into phase one instead of stepping over it. Oops, sorry, GDB syntax again. It's getting me. T for trace to step into phase one. All right, there's a extra little jump thing again because of the particular way I compiled it. Okay, so now we're in phase one. And again, if we unassemble function phase one, you can see you know what's going on at a high level view. Okay, so we've got some cruft here again. Yep, so phase one starts right there. Got some cruft, we got rep stos, we got check for debugger. Let's skip all over that, and then what do we got? All right, we have an LEA of something into RDX. We've got a move of a keyword, some, in, some data into RCX, and then we have a strings not equal function being called. Now, I don't know about you, but if I see something called strings not equal, I am thinking that probably the code is going to take two pointers to strings and then go through and walk through byte by byte and see whether they're equal or not. So what I really want to do is I want to step right up to this strings not equal. I don't necessarily want to go into it yet. I could. I could go you know, disassemble it. But I just want to see what are the inputs to strings not equal. So... Let's go ahead and you know run to cursor and get ourselves right up to that. So I'm gonna scroll down, I'm gonna click on this line, and I'm gonna hit this run to cursor. All right, right up to strings not equal. Now the question is, you know, what are the inputs to that? Well, we can see there's you know RCX is getting set, RDX is getting set right before that. So that kind of implies that those are two different parameters here. You know, if you don't remember the calling conventions for Windows, you can, of course, go back and look at it. But the first argument it would be into RCX and the second argument into RDX. So therefore, I want to see what is RCX, what is RDX. Well, both of them look kind of like pointer-ish values. You know, they don't look like specific constants or anything like that. So if I think these are pointers and if I think they're pointing at strings, then it behooves me to go examine those things as strings. So the, the DA command lets you look at display memory as a ASCII string. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do DA on RCX. That's my first argument. If I do that, I get input. That was the input that I gave the binary bomb. Now let's do DA on the second argument and see what I see there. All right, DA on that is going to give me the string, I am just a renegade hockey mom. Okay, well that's interesting. We have a thing called strings not equal being called where it's taking my input and it's taking a string, I am just a renegade hockey mom, which I definitely didn't put into this program. So one might reasonably expect that this is the input that it's expecting, but we now are feeding an input it's you know not expecting, so let's see what happens next. Well, after this call, there is a test EAX EAX, and basically, if the result of that is zero, it's going to jump somewhere, and if the result of that is non-zero, then it's going to call explode bomb on this next line. Well, that's obviously something we want to avoid. We don't want to explode this bomb, so we want this to be zero, because test is like an AND instruction, AND zero and zero will be zero, and jump equal would then jump over it, specifically to 2062, which if we check is right here, right after 2062. So it's basically just jumping over the call to explode bomb. So we want this to return zero. Let's see what it actually returns by stepping over it. All right, we see our AX is equal to one. So that's not zero, that's not what we want. And that means that this thing is going to call to explode bomb. There we go. The jump zeroed was not taken. The jump equal was not taken. And so now it's going to call to explode bomb. If we do that, step over that, then boom, this process is terminated. And the output is boom, the bomb has blown up. Okay, well now we have a reasonable expectation that probably the thing that this program is looking for for this particular phase is I am just a renegade hockey mom. So let's go ahead and restart the program and try providing that as the input. Restart the program, set our breakpoint on main, reload the symbols, go. All right, now I'm gonna also set a breakpoint on phase one, and while I'm at it, why not set one on phase two on the hopes that I will get past this. All right, so breakpoint, phase one and breakpoint phase two, and let's just go ahead and go. Here's our typical output. Now let's provide the input that it's expecting. Harder in a VM with different Macintosh keyboard. I'm just a renegade hockey mom. Hit enter. All right, it hits the breakpoint at phase one. And let's just go ahead and you know step and see what we're gonna see in terms of the output from strings not equal. So stepping over, stepping over, stepping over. We're up to strings not equal. We could do a quick sanity check that we successfully got the right value in here. So let's do DA and that, okay, cool. This RCX, which was previously our input, is now this input. I'm Renegade Hockey Mom. So let's step over. String's not equal. The output is RAX is zero. Great. So zero and zero is zero. So the jump zero should be taken. And indeed, we successfully jumped over the explode bomb. And we will now return out of the function. So step, 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 step. And boom, I returned out, phase diffused, cool. Gonna just keep stepping, keep going, keep going. Some printf, some read line. Let's go ahead and step over the read line. And let's examine the new output. All right, it says phase one diffused. How about the next one? And it is once again looking for some sort of input. So I can give it some sort of input and I can continue the process and try it all over again. Next up, phase two.
All right, well, this is where I'm going to mostly leave you, basically saying, you know, this is the game. Like, figure out the rest of the inputs that is needed for this particular binary executable to successfully complete it without exploding. One little thing that I should tell you, this particular executable accepts a file provided on the command line with solutions one per line. So in order to do that, we would open up Notepad. I'm a nano and notepad kind of guy. So we need to provide the you know right input there was I am just a renegade hockey mom. That may have copied, that may have not. Oh, success. All right, and now I'm going to save this file as a.txt on my desktop. a.txt on my desktop. And so the way that we would provide a.txt, so you can basically provide as you solve this, each time you solve a phase, just put the new solution here and then you can set a breakpoint in a later phase. And these solutions will be fed into each phase, you know, one at a time. And so the right way to do that is, you know, quit this out, open executable, select your bomb.exe, and then under arguments, the first command line argument needs to be the path to your solutions file. So mine is users, user, desktop, a.txt. So if I run the program like that, and I just go ahead and hit G for go, then I probably specified something wrong about the path. So let's try that again. Okay, no, it wasn't that I had the path wrong. It was just that you need to have a new line after this. So it needs to be, I am just a renegade hockey mom and the new line so that there is a blank line afterwards. So let's go ahead and open it again. Open executable, C colon users, user desktop a.txt, select the bomb. And this time, as long as we have the right new line there, if we just hit go, you will see that it says phase one diffused. How about the next one? And it'll basically be waiting for the phase two input. So you could basically set a phase two breakpoint, provide your solutions in your a.txt, and then just continue on, you know, provide a proposed solution for the next phase, like so, and then just continue on and analyze the code to see how it's actually used. All right, this is where I will leave you, and now it's time for you to dig into the guts of the Binary Bomb Lab. Good luck.